now welcome to your screens virtually George Eagley. Greetings to everyone at ICCF24. Uh, my name is George Agelli, and I should like to talk about one uh, very interesting and, uh, and uh, potentially very useful method, uh, direct energy production by LENR. It's a plasma oscillation which generates uh, electrical energy. But uh, uh, I shall uh, elaborate later how this uh, very strange uh, oscillation takes place. I have written previously eight very long paper in the Infinite Energy uh, magazine, uh, roughly 150 pages. And in order to, to understand uh, this whole process, I strongly recommend you to read these papers we have Submit, submitted a patent application which is uh, clearer with the technical details. The aim of the project to explore the specifics, the uh, physics of direct electric energy production. We had the source as uh, forgotten patents and forgotten academic uh, research, mainly British. And I had more than 25 years lab experience on replicating forgotten test results of Chernetsky and Korea. Our challenge has been, given the financial constraint, to understand the chain of several physical processes, to increase the efficiency of catalytic fusion, finding the most important engineering technical parameters, and of course the big enemy has been to improve quality control. As it produces electrical energy, one can charge uh, batteries. So, for example, one can charge uh, cars, electric cars. Uh, I see personally great potential in electric airplanes because one advantage of this device and this uh, process that it has a very advantageous uh, uh, weight and power ratio, so onboard generation of electrical energy is possible, though this device is very crude, this is more or less a research device, but uh, it can be uh, built into a more sophisticated, much better device. The most important test parameter was for us uh, to find out uh, the specific peak energy densities, the, the peak power of the burst, and those were in the order of megawatts per square millimeters, though they were short bursts. It is possible to estimate that one kilowatt uh, tubes are possible uh, to design and manufacture, and uh, the specific weight is also of importance. Uh, we estimate that 10 kilowatts per kilogram is possible. Therefore, the uh, electric airplane is not a pipe dream. The manufacturing cost is estimated uh, to be relatively cheap, around uh, 100 US dollar per kilowatt. Uh, the device in its simplest form is portable. Uh, as you see, it, it drives uh, uh, actually two resistors and input-output. I shall uh, tell you about the details later. And uh, gra gratis, uh, there is a small neon tube. It is portable. It is driven by three batteries. Uh, this is a, a high-voltage uh, transformer. With a feedback, in principle, in the long term, uh, it can be uh, self-sustaining. So there is no point of uh, having uh, external uh, batteries. Actually, uh, there are three major parts of this device. One, the input part is a <clears throat> high voltage uh, relaxation oscillator. Uh, which is quite simple. There is a source of, of current and voltage, a 
and this capacitor is charged through a, a resistor. There is a sawtooth pipe on discharge uh, with the help of relaxation oscillator, which has a pretty bad efficiency. This is the input part. Uh, this H is the capacitor. The middle part is actually the diffusion reactor. It's right here. I shall uh, show it you uh, later. This is practically a deceptively simple looking uh, discharge tube. We have uh, described that at the cathode, the voltage is uh, the sawtooth uh, shape. Note that 2 millisecond is one division. The output, on the other hand, on the anode, right here, the fusion oscillations, the burst appear, and please note that 500 nanosecond is uh, the division of, of time. So, after each of the discharge, a very powerful fusion explosion takes place, and that is driving the system. So, the sparks are visible between the cathode and the anode. Uh, the gas is actually uh, hydrogen. It's a mixture of hydrogen and deuterium. However, when we used other gases like dry air or, or helium, there was no effect whatsoever. The discharges are actually absorbed or extracted by another resistor over here, or we also use a discharge tube. This is the discharge tube connected to the anode. In my opinion, LENR, the area of cold fusion or low energy nuclear reaction, is much much wider than ever expected. Of course, the most uh, well-known is the palladium. Uh, deuterium is a uh, heat-yielding Pons Fleischmann uh, kind of uh, reaction. But this is the most widely known uh, in the last 30, 40 years. The other, also other effect yielding heat is the nickel and, uh, and hydrogen. I had hands-on experience with the Petter, Petterson uh, cells. I was not very happy. It, it always broke down after two days. The next uh, field where I have expertise is the transmutation uh, is a dusty resonant plasma. And in my opinion, uh, this is the most ubiquitous, uh, most frequent form of uh, cold fusion. It is driving the stars and, and quasars because the interstellar dust is falling into stars and it is fueling uh, the corona of the stars, which are always uh, orders of magnitude hotter than the surface of, of any stars. This is a resonant dust fusion device burning uh, coal without CO2 with the help of uh, LENR heat generation. The uh, other area, cavitation bubbles underwater, uh, sparky uh, discharges, which is uh, causing heat and transmutation, or the heat may split water. The fourth area, which I am familiar, catalytic quasi particles. So when uh, actually uh, cold fusion or LENR is mediated by heavy uh, electrically charged particles. Uh, one is the plasmons, polaritons, uh, which is yielding heat. I have built uh, such a devices also working with hydrogen. And we are talking now in this presentation uh, those uh, driven or catalyzed uh, by condensed plasmoids. And uh, only in this area we have electrical energy uh, production uh, in my own uh, personal 
uh, experience, though there are other electrical uh, methods as well. And the fifth area is biological transmutation. Uh, and in, in, it is hotly debated, known for 200 years, and it is uh, fully banned. We are able to measure quite well the input energy and the output energy with the help of a small calorimeter. It looks like this. Usually we fill it up uh, with uh, oil or some kind of heat uh, conducting uh, grease and uh, we are able to measure uh, the temperatures after the discharge, after the sparks, and we have uh, shown you the sparks before. Uh, the, <clears throat> there is a, a, a very brief uh, series of explosions, uh, uh, catalytic uh, fusions, LENR processes. The, uh, on the receiving or the extraction end, uh, we have this uh, uh, resistor inside, uh, inside uh, the calorimeter. Here is the resistor. And uh, usually we take a test run, which takes 20 minutes. We wait until everything is in a steady state. And uh, these calor calorimeters are always uh, calibrated uh, by a DC power supply. So we are able to tell uh, what is the uh, power input uh, equilibrium temperature curve. So this is a simple but reliable method. And in this way, we were able uh, to, to measure that uh, the power input-output ratio is uh, uh, between 2 and uh, at, at the best uh, 20. However, with the help of feedback, it can be even uh, higher. This effect was uh, discovered many times. Uh, Tesla got uh, three patents uh, on the fundamentals of this effect. However, the first uh, widespread uh, academic study was done in England uh, by Norman Coley uh, and Patterson and uh, Irvine uh, Masson uh, on uh, the production of neon and helium by electrical discharge. Actually, in our uh, device, we are also producing some helium and, and probably neon. Their <clears throat> test results were published in the uh, Proceedings of the Royal Society just two weeks before the breakout of the First World War. And uh, the participants, uh, the young uh, researchers, were actually drawn into the army and then perished, and no one ever took up this line of research. And I have to mention G.G. Thompson, who discovered the electron, he published in the science uh, an important paper uh, about uh, the finding of tritium, but they had no name at that time, he just called X3. Uh, the title is The Appearance of Helium and Neon in Vacuum Tubes. And the vacuum tubes uh, are quite simple, straightforward. In hydrogen, they are making sparks. Actually, I found some, some 20 uh, granted US patents uh, on the field of uh, catalyzed fusions, all related to, to spark discharges, either in water vapor or in hydrogen. But these inventions were always by accident, and that's the problem. Uh, these uh, patents are practically useless, irrepeatable, because the inventors who stumbled into this effect simply uh, by luck had no idea what caused it. They had no idea how to make uh, this effect uh, permanent and uh, of very high efficiency, except Henry Moray and Nikola Tesla, but they never left us a full description of the device. 
So our disclosure will be the first one, which is able uh, to explain fully the physical process and the technical and the necessary technical background to it. In a, a catalyzed uh, uh, process, actually, always needs some material, which is the catalyst. In our case, the catalyst is the so-called condensed plasmoids, which were discovered and forgotten uh, several times, at least a dozen times. Ken Shoulders uh, got five U.S. patents, very detailed, very well written uh, uh, patent uh, of how to generate uh, these condensed plasmoids. And uh, they are actually looking uh, like uh, <clears throat> a necklace uh, made out of pearls. Actually, these are highly charged, electrically charged uh, particles, and that's the strange part of it. Uh, shoulders called it um, heavy electrons. Others who discovered it, uh, for example, the Russian Messians, called it uh, as uh, explosive discharge. But uh, the researcher who, who measured it, uh, actually, the, the, the charge itself is a German researcher just before the breakout of the Second World War. <clears throat> he published a book on it uh, much later, Electron Avalanches and Breakdown in Gases. He called this effect as an electron avalanche. And uh, he was able to measure that uh, the overall charge of these uh, condensed plasmoids of this necklace was at most uh, in the order of uh, 2 billion charges, but uh, much uh, frequent is when uh, there are only 100 million electrons in one necklace or, or or charge pearls. So the secret is uh, of this process, how to generate efficiently uh, these uh, highly charged uh, uh, quasi particles. It took me about 40 years of, uh, of effort to figure out that uh, this is uh, uh, a catalytic fusion process uh, Catalyst is uh, really widespread in biology, but in, in industrial chemistry as well, but not in fusion, it is not now. This uh, <clears throat> condensed plasmoids or heavy electrons independently, they are quite uh, stable. Uh, and uh, that is the, the point. Actually, <clears throat> catalyzed fusion takes place in the following uh, manner. Let's suppose that uh, this uh, necklace chain of uh, heavily charged uh, quasi-particles are attracting a proton, accelerating, and uh, the proton, if it is uh, fairly fast, it may acquire enough uh, energy. Uh, it is uh, 0 0.78 uh, million electron volts. So uh, instead of the proton and an electron, a neutron will be formed. And the neutron is able to participate, a slow neutron will be able to participate in many processes. The foremost and most frequent is that a proton will react uh, with a neutron forming a deuterium and that will release energy. A deuterium again uh, will react with the next uh, electron uh, forming tritium and so on and so on. So this is the energy producing uh, part of the process. There was an unwanted side effect. We observed a transmutation. Carbon deposits appeared on the surface of the cathode when the input current exceeded a threshold value. The hydrogen was generated in phosphoric acid and the electrodes were stainless steel. The <clears throat> map of operation where it, it works, it is like a lowbar skin. Uh, there are tiny isolated uh, parameter areas where it works, otherwise you will find nothing. Actually, in all textbooks uh, the, uh, on gas discharge, the very uh, <clears throat> notion 
of this uh, uh, contents plasmoid is there. Uh, this is the example of a uh, loser. It is always here, this huge negatively charged uh, blob, but no one had uh, the courage or curiosity to ask what keeps uh, them together. Because when this object attracts a proton and accelerates, uh, thus a neutron is formed, then uh, we know well that classical electrodynamics strictly forbids the existence of such a highly charged object. But so does uh, uh, the Copenhagen interpretation of mic microscopic quantum mechanics. It also forbids, yet uh, it exists, it has been uh, found and invented many times. So unfortunately, here we are dealing with the internal troubles of quantum mechanics. We are addressing here problems with the very foundations of physics. Fortunately, from engineering viewpoint, we can uh, use it and we can use as an eco-friendly solution, a sustainable energy production uh, device. One major problem is that uh, for effects are involved and each of them are really, really distant from each other. And it is unusual that somebody has all the necessary skills for the four major areas. That is a thorough understanding of macroscopic quantum mechanical effects, uh, how to form efficiently condensed plasmoids. The other uh, major area is uh, plasma physics and within plasma physics sparks discharge, non-sustained uh, discharge and, uh, and this is uh, creating uh, these condensed plasmoids, uh, macroscopic quantum mechanical effects. In the LENR part, we have two process, neutron formation and fusion by neutrons. And of course, the whole circuit is unusual. We have to generate and capture pulsed electric circuits, actually, with three different time constants. Condensed plasmoids are very varied, very unusual uh, <clears throat> objects. In my opinion, it is a macroscopic quantum effect in the same measure as uh, ferromagnetism or superconductivity or superfluidity. In most textbooks, for example, it is written that uh, a soft uh, iron piece is always attracted uh, to a magnet. This is not true. Uh, sometimes there is a place where actually <clears throat> a permanent magnet is uh, not attracting but repulsing a piece of uh, soft iron. However, this uh, <clears throat> macroscopic quantum objects, uh, these necklaces or, or condensed plasmoids are even stranger than, let's say, superfluidity, uh, because they are nearly stable at room temperature, so you, you don't have to cool it down. It is, uh, in a sense, similar to ferromagnetic materials. To conclude this talk, uh, here are some data about the prospects. The peak power density of the burst is in the order of megawatts per square millimeter. Uh, this is not a mistake uh, uh, because it is sustained only for a nanosecondum, millisecondum time range, uh, each small explosion. The duty cycle is under 1 to the 1000. The estimated uh, sustained uh, power output of a large surface industrial a uh, tube is around uh, 1 plus minus half kilowatt with very low heat release based on uh, the test results. The estimated power per weight ratio for a properly designed uh, industrial tube is up to 10 kilowatt per kilogram. The input output power for the extraction circuit, the electric circuit, the power weight ratio is about the same as above, that is the electric circuit is not heavy. Last but not least, the estimated manufacturing cost for a reactor tube plus electronics is somewhere under 100 US dollar per kilowatt. Thank you, George.